Hey friends, I know it's been forever since I've made a video. I was having some issues with YouTube and I wasn't able to post anything. So the issues have been fixed and I am back and I am coming at you with a brand new Photoshop tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use the multiply blending mode. Um, the multiply blending mode is something that I pretty much use every single time I design anything. Um, it's going to come in super handy and I'm aware that this tutorial is probably going to be super super basic. Um, if you already know Photoshop, you probably already know this, um, but I know a lot of my viewers are just learning Photoshop and they don't really know certain features and functions and what exactly it can do. So this tutorial is for you guys. So what I'm going to do is start with an image here. And this image, it's of me, um, and it has a white or a light background. So what I want to do is put one of these watercolor images onto the photo. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select one of them. I'm just using the lasso tool, just messily um, selecting around it. And then I'm going to copy, control C, and I'm just going to paste it, control V, into my photo. I'm going to need to resize it because it's pretty large, so I'm just going to right click, free transform, and I'm just going to scale that down. And what you can see um, on this image is that the background is white, and obviously we're going to want to get rid of that, and we're going to want to blend the image into the photo so that you don't see the white background and Basically, the multiply tool is going to prevent you from having to um, grab your eraser or grab your um, magic wand and delete all of this white area. Instead, in just one click, we're going to get rid of the white background around this image. So let me just move this out of the way for a minute. And then if you look over here in your layers panel, We've put um, this watercolor layer on top of the background layer, and we're just going to choose from this drop down menu that says normal. We're just going to choose multiply, and you'll see what happens immediately. It gets rid of the white background, and you can see from my scanned image the background wasn't completely white, so I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but it is um, slightly gray. So I'm just going to fix that really quickly. All we have to do is make that white background brighter. So I'm going to go to layer, oh, sorry, image adjustments, levels. Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a minute. Um, and then we're just going to bring this level, just bring it up slightly until you cannot see that gray outline anymore. Basically all you're doing there is making um, the background that was white from that image, you're just brightening it and making it a true white. So now you can see that I have this image here and it is, it has no white background and it fits perfectly on the photo with no lines, no erasing, nothing like that. So that is one way to use the multiply tool. So another thing you can use the multiply tool for is combining a variety of images onto one background and making sure that they all blend together without having to use your eraser or get rid of any um, lines around each image. So this is one graphic that I was working on recently. I'm just going to show you what it looks like if I fill the background with a different color. So you can see that all of these images are separate images and they have this white box around them, the background of each image, right? So here's what will happen if we select one of the images and we change the blend mode to multiply. It's going to remove the white background and make the image blend in with your background color. Now multiply mode I find usually just works best on light backgrounds, whites and light colors. You can see why, um, because it, it makes the actual image darker, um, if that makes sense. You can see it 
in clear view right here, I'm just going to change these all to multiply. <clears throat> Let me change the background color back to white. And you can see normally what would happen if we bumped these up to one another, you would see that white background and it just doesn't blend in you know properly with the with other images so instead of grabbing your eraser and erasing all the way around the image and everything it takes a lot of time it's not worth it just hit multiply and it will fix that for you now another thing you can use the multiply blending mode for is if you're scanning an image and you want to add some color to it um, what this is going to do is allow you to place color behind your image. Um, let me just show you what I mean because that didn't really make too much sense. Um, I've just scanned in this image right here and I'm going to duplicate the layer and then I'm going to set this new layers blending mode to multiply. Then what I'm going to do is create a new layer move that behind the layer I just created and then what I can do let me zoom in here is let me grab a brush I can actually paint sorry my things lagging on me because of the screen recorder alright so what I can actually do now is paint in the within the outlines of the image without going over the outlines. So let me show you what I mean. If my uh, thing stops freezing on me, okay, there we go. So I can go like this. You can see that I'm painting right over the outline here, but it's not actually painting on top of the outline. So you can do this. Use your coloring skills and try to stay within the lines because if you do go outside the lines obviously it's going to show. But this is just showing you that if you have a layer on top of a another layer um, and set the blend mode to multiply, all of that white area from your top layer is going to become transparent which will then allow you to add color or you know change certain elements of your design so this is just another example of what you can do with the multiply blend mode this comes in handy if you're doing illustrations and you scan them into your computer and then you're like ah, how do I add color to this without removing all of the white first or you know trying to erase all of the white and then add color it just it just doesn't work that way very well um, so give this a try and I'll show you one more thing coming up in one second after my computer stops glitching out on me so a while ago I created um, another video called how to make a white background transparent in Photoshop and some people understood what I was trying to do and some people didn't quite get it. Um, it caused a little bit of controversy in the comments. Uh, people were wondering why I did things that way and they're like, oh, you made it too complicated. Um, I wanted to show you why I did that video that way um, compared to using the multiply mode, which is what some people suggested, which just wouldn't have worked at all. Um, so for that video, I was basically trying to do ve something very specific. I was trying to create um, Photoshop brushes and overlays so that I could package them into some um, overlay packs. And what I needed them to do was um, I needed them to have a transparent background and I needed them to be semi-transparent as well. Um, so I was actually using these watercolor splotches and I needed the actual inside, the colored area of the, the watermark to be semi-transparent as well. 
So let me show you why that would not have worked had I done it this way. Um, I've copied, I've chosen one of these splotches and I've copied it. I'm just going to paste it into a new window with a transparent background. So I'm going to paste that in there and then let me transform this. Let me just scale it down a little bit so you can see. Now what happens when you put a layer on top of a transparent background with no layers underneath it and you choose the multiply mode, absolutely nothing happens. That's because you use the multiply blend mode to blend your layer into another layer. So for example, if I were to add another layer on top of this one, I've just pasted the same image again, and I chose multiply on that, then you would see the transparency start to take place because I've placed that on top of an existing layer, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so people were wondering, you know, why I did it the way that I did it in that video. It was a bit more complicated. Um, it was just basically for a very specific reason. And basically, if you weren't looking to do what I was doing, it probably wouldn't make sense to you. But if you were looking to do what I was doing, then you would understand. Um, so yeah, so this is my image on the transparent background. Multiply mode does not do anything for it. Um, let me just change this back to normal. And if I were to actually take my magic eraser tool here and click on the white area to erase just the, the outside white area, you can see that the, um, the image doesn't become semi-transparent because you're only getting rid of that white area around the image. It doesn't take away any of the whiteness from the actual colored image itself, okay? Okay, so let me just show you what would have happened if I did it this way. Um, and let me try to put it on top of this image and you'll see exactly what I mean. See, if I drag the image into the photo, it doesn't do what I wanted it to do at all. Um, as I said before, all we've really done is remove the white um, background from around the edges and we still are left with an opaque image that it's just not the effect that uh, that we're going for so the only way that I could really fix that is to kind of adjust the transparency here and still I mean that's not the way that it should be done um, and now if we were to multiply that now you can see that that is the proper effect. So I hope that explained um, the last video to you guys and also I hope this video helped um, get you acquainted with the multiply blend mode and I really want you guys to try this for yourself and open up some images and try adding a few layers to it um, and just play with the blend modes a little bit. Um, try multiply, I mean try a couple of other ones if you want um, but I think that after you get the hang of using the multiply tool, it will become one of your most used blend modes. So um, I really hope that helped you guys. And I actually wanted to get your opinion on a couple things because, well actually on one thing, um, because I recently started a new website separate from Wonderforest. Um, it's called ICanBuildAblog.com um, and it's basically where I now put all of my techie, nerdy type tutorials, blog tips, um, WordPress blogger, AdSense, a whole bunch of um, tips and tricks and just information um, about websites and blogs and all that kind of stuff. So I was wondering, do you guys think that I should make a separate channel, um, a separate YouTube channel for those kind of videos, like this kind of video? Um, do you think that it should go on a new channel for, you know, tech type stuff, tutorials, and then leave my Wonder Forest channel for more personal blog related, like beauty, girly kind of things? I don't know. What do you think? Because I don't know, you know, where my viewers really came from and what they like, 
I don't know what you what do you like to see? Do you would you like to see this kind of thing separate from my other videos, or do you like them all together? Let me know, and I will try to figure this out. Um, but yeah, again, I hope this helps some of you guys. And thank you for watching, and I will talk to you later.